And then this is about you and how you navigate your job. Recently, of course, their huge fines were laid down for some of these hits. Really, like $50,000, $75,000 fines for some of these hits. Now, that seemed to really anger a section of players who went to the media. Um, even uh, one, one of the people at your at your right hand, Kevin Mawai, uh, he, he expressed some very strong sentiments that he was against some of these fines by the league. So it upset a good portion of your constituency. But on the other hand, as the union, you have an obligation to also look out for the health of your players. How do you how do you thread that needle yourself, and what's your position on some of these big fines that have been handed down? Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, it's a false choice between uh, fine and no fine. Uh, it's a false choice between uh, being aggressive and fighting unfair fines and choosing uh, not to enforce the health and safety of our players. Right. Um, as we said, we will fight any fine, any discipline that th- we think that is disproportionate or unfair. Um, We also said that we would uh, fight uh, any imposition of punishment that wasn't covered by the rules of the collective bargaining agreement. But you raise a good point. I mean, from uh, from the fans perspective, uh, sometimes they they only hear about when the union steps up to say uh, that the fine was not appropriate or the punishment was not appropriate. But the reality is, look, for every guy that delivered a hit, I also represent a guy who took that lick. Um, and my job is to make sure uh, to be extremely aggressive on overall player health and safety. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't pick one side. I don't pick the other side. Uh, but there isn't a day where we aren't going to be zero sum yeah. about player health and safety. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, my my biggest concern about uh, the thing about the fines is is look. Let's look at this from an absolutely comprehensive standpoint. Our fans love our game, and we saw those big hits on Sunday. But our fans never see what happens at practice. The reality is you have just as many, if not more, injuries uh, that occur uh, during practice. Mm -hmm. When you look at all of the medical literature, just focusing on concussions alone, when you look at the current medical literature on concussions or sub-concussive events, All of that literature is trending towards a conclusion that it's not the big bang, kaboom, knockout, smackdown hit on a Sunday that leads to the long term uh, problems. It's the accumulation. Mm -hmm. So we are still in a world where there are no um, hard and fast rules about the amount of times players can go head to head at practice. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me if you want to really focus on. Uh, health and safety in the National Football League, you don't myopically think about those big hits on Sunday. You come up with standardized rules about what's the right level of head-to-head contact throughout the week. Uh, throughout the week. Yeah. What's the right contact during training camp? Yeah. So one of the things that we have looked at over the last year, uh, especially given the league's um, uh, discussion <laughs> about an enhanced season. I still don't know what enhanced means. I know what two extra games yeah. mean. Uh, uh, t- t- that was many, another question I wanted to ask. Too many Cialis sponsors for the right. league. That <laughs> everything's about n- <laughs> league mail enhancement. I wanted to, I, I wanted to, Family show. Family yeah, I, show. I, I, I wanted to kind of I wanted to talk about that. But one of my major things is as a fan of the NFL, as a person who really loves the NFL, you're in a position where Roger Goodell gets to hand out suspensions. And if you appeal the suspension, suspension, you're appealing it to him. Yeah, sounds fair to me, right? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out <laughs> that for was you. Sarcasm. Yeah, yeah, if anybody who didn't catch that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how does that work? How can you have a system that's fair when the person that gives the suspension, you are actually having to appeal to get the suspension it's a reduced. Great question. Is yeah, that it, is that on the table? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, is that the something you're discussing going oh, absolutely. along? And we've made look, thing. we've made a little bit of progress, not nearly the progress that I would hope. Right. We, we have two hearing officers now for uh, on field offenses. Where at least right now, when we have that initial hearing, uh, it's by two hearing officers that we pay. The NFL players pay half the salary. The NFL plays half the okay. salary. So those guys have now moved into a more um, <clears throat> neutral mm-hmm. scenario uh, than what we've had in the past. But you're right. E- the, the appeal from that still goes back. So uh, I won't be happy until, frankly, to be blunt, we have the same fairness uh, that, that NBA players have. Yeah, due that, process. That we have the same process. fairness that ML, uh, ML uh, Major League Baseball yeah. players have. Yeah. But, um, you know, look, I care about 
uh, and I'm I'm blessed to only care about the health and safety of our players. Mm. Um, I, you know, it is a great job where I don't have to balance anything. I don't have to serve uh, uh, a number of masters. Um, I have the ability to have a zero sum focus on the health and safety of our players. So when we're still in a world where you can have some teams who are banging heads every day, two a days for training camp, that happens outside of the public eye. And I know. Cleveland Browns. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. Yeah, I heard Cleveland Browns. Um, um, and, and other teams that, that actually do a better job. We need to get to a world where there is a uniform standard. Fair.